Welcome, everybody. Uh, this is another uh, podcast, AVK Tailgate Talk. Uh, we talk about the World Waterworks Manufacturing Engineering Standards, Certifications, uh, Distribution Utilities, and more. Uh, we feel we manufacture the best valves and hydrants under Earth, and uh, we focus on solutions, not just products. So today, John Wilbur and I are going to discuss connections and restraints. And I will try to move to the next slide here. Um, again, if you have any suggestions or ideas for topics and you wanted to set in on these, you're welcome to do so. Anybody that does that uh, gets a hat and a shirt. We do have some upgrades coming to the software in the next couple of weeks, and that includes the ability to have up to six people on the stage here at one time. So uh, in addition to John and I, for example, on this, we could have a, about four more people, and we're hoping that uh, runs a little smoother. And we'll also have some other upgrades to the software as well. So that being said, uh, we'll go to the next slide. How do you this, John? Or... All right. So we're going to talk about the types of end connections that are offered on AVK products, skate valves, fire hydrants, butterfly valves, everything. And the main ones are flanges, of course, mechanical joints, uh, the high max end connection, which is a restrained joint with one bolt. Uh, Push-on joints, HDPE fusible ends, which we offer on our gate valves and also the fire hydrants. Uh, grooved end connections, which is primarily for fire protection. NPT for smaller diameter valves. And we'll also talk a little bit about tapping valves and cut-in valves. Yep, and we will also talk about the hydrant connections. So for the dry barrel hydrants, MJ, flange, push-ons, the HIMAX, and the Series 66 PE base, <coughs> excuse me, we'll also touch on a little bit about uh, wet barrel hydrants. Primarily, we have the eight hole ANSI flange, uh, six inch as well. And then we have a six inch uh, San Diego style, uh, which is just a little bit different than the six inch AWWA spec. And then the Series 67, you can get it with the HIMAX uh, and the two inch. You can also get MJ flange and MPT variations. So here are the end connections we offer for our different valves. Uh, gate valves are all of the standard end connections, MJ, MJ flange, flange, push on, push on, and then the MJ flange and the push on flange. And then we have a bunch of specialized connections as well, uh, the polyethylene. NPT, which I guess isn't specialized, but is for smaller vinyl valves and stands for National Pipe Thread Tapered. Grooved end connections, which comply to C606 and the HIMAX end connections. And then for the butterfly valves, we offer uh, MJ, MJ, flange, flange, MJ, flange for certain sizes and wafer. And then for our larger diameter butterfly valves, 24 inch and up, we do flange, flange, and MJ, MJ. All right. We occasionally do get requests for uh, ISO type flanges, uh, PN10, PN16, British uh, standard pipe thread, and AVK valves and hydrants can also be used with restraint joints. And then we have some options that we're going to talk about today that are built in restraints. All right. So for the flange and connections that AVK offers, we offer two types of flanges. There's the Class 125, Class 150 flange. Uh, the difference between 125 and 150 is that 125 is gray iron and 125 or 150 is ductile iron. And then we also offer the Class 250 flanges, which are a little heavier duty. They have a raised face, thicker, and uh, more bolts to hold the connection together. And that's just on our gate valves, by the way. Yeah, so flanges. Basically, the class 125 and class 150 flangers have the same dimensions. Uh, class 125's gray iron, class 150's commonly been for ductile. The 150 pound um, can be basically notated in various ways. And if you have any questions when you get a request for quote from a contractor or something, uh, feel free to get a hold of us. Anything to add to that, John? Yeah, we should also point out that uh, Class 125 and Class 150 flanges also comply with AWBAC 207 Class D and Class E flanges. All righty. And then for ASME Class 250 flanges, they're also available. 
They're a little bit thicker, have a larger diameter, more bolts than the 125, 150 flange, and they have a raised face. Uh, so class 125, class 150 flanges are rated for 250 PSI for liquid water. And as, as temperatures get higher and you turn to steam, they start derating them until you get all the way down to either 150 for ductile iron or 125 for superheated steam for gray iron. And then class 250 flanges are also rated for 500 PSI, and that is for liquid water. And then as, pre or as temperatures get higher and you turn to steam, they derate them until you get down to 250 PSI. But everything we deal with is liquid water. So that's why a class 125, class 150 flange is rated for 250 PSI and a class 250 is rated for 500 PSI. Flanges use two type of gaskets, the full face gasket and the ring gasket. And if you're using uh, a, a flange for 350 PSI, instead of just your flat rubber flange, you should use one of these high performance flanges because they do over quite a bit better. It compresses all those rings and you get a tighter seal. So 350 PSI valves require special flanges, not just your flange gaskets, not just your standard gasket. All right, flange installation. Most of you are aware of this, but just make sure the faces are clean and smooth. Uh, not unlike HDPE, you want to make sure everything's clean and smooth. Make sure the gasket's in uh, the correct size, obviously. No burrs, uh, flange face, and the bolt hole edges are good and clean. And make sure the bolts are the correct diameter and the length of the flange joint. And we've actually had that occasionally on tap valves. All right, so flange installation, this is just basically talking about how you should bolt them all together. Uh, you should snug them up until the two surfaces are contacting each other. And then you should go around two or three times, uh, tightening each bolt in a star pattern until you get to the correct torque. And you should talk to the gasket manufacturer about the correct torque. Usually the valve manufacturer doesn't know that because we don't know what particular gasket you're using. So gasket manufacturers usually publish tables of torque values that they need for their gaskets to seal tightly. MJ, uh, mechanical joints to MJ. Standard dimensions are found in AWWA C111, and for AVK at this point, they're available on gate valves from 2 through 36 inch. AWWA has standard dimensions for MJ. So the nice thing about a mechanical joint, which is primarily for underground service, is that it will uh, deflect from anywhere from five to three degrees, depending on the size of the joint. And this means that when you've got a buried pipeline, your joints can shift back and forth due to soil movement, and you uh, will not get a leak in your piping system. And it also, if you're doing a long run, you can do a slight curve, uh, depending on the joint deflection. Yep. Mechanical joints have basically four parts, the flange uh, or the bell cast into the valve, a rubber gasket that fits into the ID of the bell or the raceway, a gland uh, to compress the gasket, and then the T-bolts with the nuts. A uh, wrench is required to tighten the nuts uh, at the T-bolts. And what, oh, so one thing about uh, putting in the gasket is sometimes somebody will start at one end of the gasket and they'll start tapping it into the joint and they'll work all the way around. And they'll get to the other end and they'll see a little loop of rubber sticking out and they'll say that your your MJ joint is undersized. But the reason that happens is because when you tap the gasket in, it compresses the little gasket just a little bit, which makes it just a little bit longer. So uh, when you put a joint together, make sure that you just slide the gasket down and then use the gland to suck the gland, the gasket into the bell of the pipe. Good input there. Uh, mechanical joint assembly, clean the bell end of the valve and the plain end of the pipe, add lube to the plain end of the pipe, and place it on the plain end of the pipe, as John said. Uh, make sure it's properly oriented and place the gasket on the plain end of the pipe, narrow end of the gasket towards the pipe end. Anything to add to that, John? Uh, no, I think you got that pretty well covered. So once you got the pipe inserted into the MJ, MJ bell, uh, pull the gasket into the MJ bell as well. But like I said, don't tap it in around it. 
and then push the gland towards the pipe uh, and then tighten the bolts to the correct torque. Usually that'll be in C111. Uh, it's usually right around 50 to 75 foot pounds and I can't remember off the top of my head what it is. Uh, push-ons are quick and easy uh, joint assembly. There's two type push-on, tighten and fast tight. AVK gate valves and hydrants are tightened joints and require tightened gaskets. So a push-on joint is even simpler than an MJ. It's just a bell on one end of the pipe and the spigot end of the other and a gasket. And it also allows deflections of up to five to three degrees as well. So it's good for buried soils. Push-ons can be used for ductile iron pipe or iron pipe sizes. And of course, dips means ductile iron. IPS is iron pipe size. Dips and ips refer to the OD of the pipe and IPS requires a transition gasket when you're installing it. So the assembly for this is pretty simple. Uh, put the gasket in the pipe, clean off the spigot end of the pipe, lubricate it with a lubri lubricant suitable for drinking water, and then push the pipe into the bell end of the socket. Uh, you can use a backhoe for that or come alongs or whatever it is that will you happen to have on site that works. HDPE fusible joints, AVK has a series 66. It's a PE, PE ended valve and hydrant also available with this kind of connection. Uh, can be joined to the pipe either by butt fusion or retro fusion. Uh, so butt fusion, both ends of the pipe are cleaned off first uh, and then they are heated. And then they press them together for a certain time and temperature to form a joint and the pipe ends melt together. And an important part of a good butt fuse joint is that little roll that you see in the middle of the picture there. And a properly done butt fusion joint is as strong as the pipe itself and leak free, which is critical. Electrofusion is your other option, just basically using a coupling and heating the elements of the interior of the coupling. The heating elements heat the pipe and melt the coupling and the pipe together usually requires some sort of an electrofusion machine uh, supplied by the coupling manufacturer. And it's similar to butt fusion in that the electrofusion is as strong as the pipe when installed correctly. And proper preparation is extremely important, so you need to make sure you read the directions if you're using electrofusion couplers. So AVK offer, also offers the HIMAX grip and connection, which was developed by Krauss. It meets or exceeds AWA C 219, which is a steel pipe standard for couplings, also certified to NSF 61 and 372. Our gate valve complies with C515. The fire hydrant complies with C502. And all of the coatings comply with C550. For the fire hydrant, we offer a six inch inlet connection. And for the gate valves, I think we offer an uh, inch and a half up through 12 inch. And we also offer a high max by flange as well. Grooved in joints are available. Um, Victolic is kind of the uh, terminology that a lot of people use. Grooved in joint dimensions are standardized by the AWWA to C606. A grooved joint is typically used for above ground implant piping and fire protection systems. And then there's the MPT threaded connection, uh, which we offer from one inch to three inches. It's a tapered thread, so when you screw it together, it screws in a certain distance and then the threads will interfere with each other and form a seal. Uh, the joint dimensions are standardized by ASME. And when you put these things together, we recommend you usually use pipe dope or a Teflon tape to ensure that you get a tight seal and that water won't leak out through the threads. Tapping flanges on a tapping valve. A tapping valve is equipped with a tapping flange on one end and MJ on the other. Uh, basically a 125, 150 flange in the bolts and the tapping sleeve. Uh, there's no AWWA standard for pipe tapping equipment and AVK does supply the tapping gasket and uh, the valve has a centering ring on that end of it. Anything to add to that, John? No, actually there, there is a standard for uh, 
the dimensions for the tapping flange, and that is covered by MSS, which is the Manufacturer Standardization Society. And I can't remember the name of the standard off the top of my head, but if you're interested, you could look up MSS and find it. Okay. And then cut-in valves, uh, we use a Series 45 full wall MJ by MJ valve uh, with one end machined for oversized pipe, uh, such as old pit cast, AC pipe, something of that nature with a larger OD than a standard, say, C900 or ductile pipe of current production standard. Cut-in valves are used along with the cut-in sleeve uh, to insert the valve when this is required in the pipeline. Cut-in sleeves are available from various manufacturers. So the way to install a cut-in valve is to uh, cut out the section of pipe, uh, slide in the cut-in sleeve on the existing pipe, install the valve on the old pipe, and then you slide the cut-in sleeve into the other side of the valve and tighten up that end connection, and then you tighten up the end connection at the, the far left end of the cut-in sleeve. And then you have a tight, uh, tight joint all the way around and a new valve in your water distribution system. Restrained joints. Um, most common that you guys have probably heard of is the term mega lug uh, invented by EBA. It consists of an MJ gland equipped with uh, bolted teeth that grip to the pipe. And to install this, you just tighten the gland to seal the pipe, uh, tighten the bolted teeth to the grip of the pipe and a mega lug 1100 is what we show here at the right hey kent there's a suggestion in, ta ta in the chat that you're supposed to speak more so i think i'm just going to be quiet for the rest of this thing <laughs> well that's there is, one, so that's there is one thing we should mention about the uh restrained joint connections is that the high max grip is also a restrained joint connection so AVK mixed-end connections that we offer, the MJ flange and the push-on flange, and also the HIMAX by flange. These are typically used with flange T's in the street. Uh, so it can turn a flange T into an MJ T with a valve at each end of the T, or a push-on push -on T. And that's about it for now, folks. Uh, we do have some additional webinars and podcasts coming up in the weeks ahead. So get with your territory manager. And uh, we would encourage you folks to give us any suggestions. That would include uh, Greg, who uh, is he always likes, very vocal. He likes that you're jittery. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. He's always pushing the envelope. So we do have a registration for the upcoming webinar. Uh, there's a link to it here on your screen. And if you have any additional questions, feel free to type them here and we'll try to do the best we can to answer them. We appreciate everybody that sets in on these. Pretty interesting. <laughs>